and good afternoon. Hello, hello, hello. I am Casey Durango of Go Keto with Casey. And I like to talk about how I've lost 97.4 pounds since starting the ketogenic protocol and how you may be able to lose weight, improve your health, and regain control of your life like I did. I hope you're all well. And I can see um, some folks are already here. Oh, apparently, there's a lot of snow going on. It's, it's brisk and chilly here today, but blue skies. So thank you for joining in. Today's topic, is keto legit? You may have heard from different sources or medical providers or publications that the ketogenic protocol is a fad, that it is a gimmick, that it's not sustainable, lots of things, lots of negative things. Well, I'm here to tell you, in my opinion, that's all bunk. Um, for those of you who don't know, the ketogenic protocol is one whereby you keep your carbohydrate intake to a level, a low level, where your liver stops pushing out glucose for fuel. And when that happens, our bodies happily turn over to burning ketone bodies for fuel. Fat. Ketone bodies are fat. Glucose is sugar. And that's, that's what it is. For most people, what will almost certainly work is 20 grams of carbohydrate a day total, not net. And, you know, some people can tolerate more, some less. For me, I keep my carbs very, very low. To be very clear, what I talk about is the ketogenic protocol as I learned it from Dr. Eric Westman and how I I practiced it, how I put it into practice. And um, I've been doing this for over seven years. If you're hearing my voice, it's very possible that you're very much like me and have had weight issues, food issues for a long time. And maybe like me, you had given up on ever being able to lose weight and feel better and get your blood sugar under control, blood pressure under control, get the joint pain under control. I'm here to tell you for me, I laid off the carbs and I've never looked back. Okay, so is it legit? Yes, it is legit. Why would it be legit? Because we were almost certainly designed to eat this way. Fatty sources of protein some non-starchy vegetables, but limited. We don't need, we really don't need vegetables, I'm going to tell you. And very low carbohydrate. Our bodies like to burn fat for fuel. My dog might start barking in a minute here because I think my husband's pulling up in his big red truck. But I put Jack outside because no matter how many times I tell my husband I'm doing a YouTube live at noon, he seems to forget. He pulls up in the middle and Jack goes berserk. So I put Jack outside. Okay, I digress. We were almost certainly designed to eat this way. What are what foods are those? Well, if it's not on page four, Dr. Westman's copyrighted page four, link below. Oh, I forgot to put the links. I'll figure that out. I'll do it after this. I'll do it after this. But if you look at any of my other videos or go to, go to my blog, um, caseydurango.com, you can find them. It's just fatty sources of protein, some non-starchy vegetables in limited supplies, some full fat dairy, if you can tolerate it in limited amounts. Did I say limited supply? Limited amounts. That's it. Don't eat if you're not hungry. Stop when you're satiated. Now, why would anyone think that that's a gimmick? Let's, let's start working backwards. Stop eating when you're satiated. That doesn't seem like a gimmick. That seems like logic. Don't eat if you're not hungry. Even more logic. Just don't eat if you're not hungry. Why would you eat if you're not hungry? Now, the thing is, on the ketogenic protocol, we have to figure out what actual hunger is. Because for many years and sometimes many decades, our brains will tell us to get more carbs because it needs more glucose, because it's burning, the brain is burning glucose for fuel because we've been feeding it carbs. It's a vicious cycle. When you lay off the carbs after really just, I mean, a day or two, and you switch over to burning ketones, 
your brain's no longer calling for more glucose. Um, you can read The Art and Science of Low-Carbohydrate Living by Dr. Stephen Finney and Jeff Folick for the explanation of physiologically why this happens. Again, you can find that at my, my, I have resources posted at my blog. So there's a physiological reason that happens. So you have to kind of give it a chance. And then you find out, yeah, I'm not hungry. But I didn't, haven't thought about eating, you know, yet. I'm, it's, it's two o'clock in the afternoon and I'm doing perfectly fine. Whereas before you might've eaten your so-called heart healthy breakfast, low fat and all this at, at eight and then 1030, you're roaming the halls looking for anything. <laughs> Preferably, you know, a donut or a bagel. But you're not really hungry because the food is probably still in your belly. Anywho. So it's not a gimmick. Don't eat if you're not hungry. Stop when you're satiated. It's like don't take a nap if you're not sleepy. That, that's just logical. And wake up when you're awake. It's just nature. The part that hangs some people up is laying off the carbs because one thing we've been told, that carbs are essential. They're not. They are literally a, not an essential macronutrient. There are three macronutrients, fat, protein, carbohydrate. Two of those are essential, meaning we must consume them to get the amino acids, which are required for us to live, for our cells to thrive and, and replicate and stay healthy and grow. Carbohydrate is not essential, meaning whatever we would derive from consuming it, our bodies can make themselves through gluconeogenesis, meaning the, the glucose is made inside our bodies by our liver. It's a magical thing. So we don't really need carbohydrate. We eat carbohydrates because food manufacturers really like us to eat carbohydrates because they're cheap, literally cheap, meaning they have very little value. They are they can be made shelf stable. They're easy to transport. They can they can linger in a packaged state for well there's the story of the 60-year-old Twinkie. But we don't need them. And they're cheap because they don't have any value. We get much more nutrition from a pork chop or an egg or some salmon. So eat fatty sources of protein. That doesn't mean eat extra fat. This is some of the hype that comes in. Don't, don't pound back fat, dietary fat. What does that mean? Fat bombs bulletproof coffee or oily coffee or whatever you want to call it, MCT oil. Those are, that's dietary fat. You want to eat the fat that comes with the protein, the bacon with the fat, the, the poultry with the skin, the beef with the fat that comes on the steak or on the chuck roast or in the ground beef. You know, and, and upside of that is those are often the, the most affordable cuts as opposed to the filet mignon, which is more expensive. Excuse me. Tis my husband. I guess he wasn't pulling down the road in his big room. Hold, please. He always forgets that I'm doing this, but I he he's he flies, so I let him know. Sorry. Sorry about that. One of these days. And I'm always happy to hear that he landed safely. What was I saying? I lost my train of thought. Oh, well. So just eat the fat that comes with the protein. So how is, that's not a gimmick. Any more than eat less and move more, you know. No one said that was a gimmick. And if it's not even very effective, depending on what you're eating. Did anyone call low fat a gimmick? Strip all the fat out of the food? and load up on snack wells. No one called that a gimmick, did they? They said, oh, that makes perfect sense. No. Lay off the carbs. And again, this is what has worked for me. It works for many people. There are different 
there are many different paths to lead to the same destination. The point is to feel healthy, feel happy, feel good about yourself, and enjoy your life. The point is not to micromanage your food intake to the point where you're obsessing about it, because that's just still obsessing about food. You know, now that I, food is not the boss of me, I have so much more brain space and time in my day. Think about how much time we have spent, some would say wasted, thinking about food, planning to eat, purchasing the food, preparing the food, eating the food, and then doing it all over again in 15 minutes. No, you know, if you can eat nutritious food and then walk away and be satisfied and healthy for the next several hours, huzzah. And many people find that their grocery bills go down on this because you, the food is more nutritious, it's more valuable, and you need less of it. It's not a gimmick. And it's not a fad. It's been around a really long time. The ketogenic protocol can be dated at least back to William Banting, who was a, 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 an English undertaker who wrote Treatise on Corpulence. And he didn't call it the ketogenic protocol. But it's been in the medical journals for the treatment of diabetes since at least, at least the 20s. And it surely goes back further than that. I'm sure William Banting got it from someone else. It's not a fad. It gets made a fad because of all the marketing. By the way, if a food product has the word keto on it, it probably isn't. Because to be shelf stable, most things have to have stuff in them to make them stable that don't serve us well. If you can eat that stuff and get it and Get to your goals, fantastic, muzzle tough. Most people are more like me. And if you're not yet, you probably will end up being like me because as we get older, things change. Now, it's, it's, it's just not a fad. It is legit. It is not dangerous. I'm going to um, direct you to my blog again for Under My Schedule. The first Tuesday of every month, um, Dr. Westman and I, he, it's his thing and I moderate it for him, with him. Um, the Durham support group meeting that used to be held in real life and for obvious reasons has gone virtual um, for the last nearly year. It's a Crowdcast live stream. It's free. It is a registered event, but it's free. First Tuesday of every month, you can see the schedule on my, on my blog and you can register for it. And th at the last... Um, one this past week, this week, um, I asked Dr. Westman, because I've heard the question, is there any medical situation for which the ketogenic protocol is contraindicated? Nope. But, but what about no gallbladder? It's fine. What about no thyroid? Fine. What about hypothyroidism, hyperthyroidism? Hashimoto's thyroid, uh, post-menopause, I, I only have one kidney. Um, I'm, you know, I'm, it just really is just a fine way to eat. So it's not a gimmick. It's not a fad. It is not dangerous. If you don't need it, great. If you do, how do you do it? Keep your carbs, 20 grams or fewer a day, total, not net. Don't eat it if it's not on page four, and I will put a link below. Don't eat if you're not hungry. Stop when you're satiated. Oh, there goes Jack. Okay, next thing. What am I drinking? I get asked almost every week. Tall glass, full of ice, diet tonic water, splash of diet cranberry, and a squeeze of lime. I really only drink it on Saturdays. It's, it's tart and helps wet my whistle. I'm gonna turn my attention to comments and thank you for everyone who's shown up. Uh, I do see some patrons here. I'm going to give a quick nod to patrons. I have a private support group on Patreon. I wanna thank them very much. Um, they allowed me to, patrons allowed me to change careers. 
Um, and I'm getting a lot of gratification out of what I'm doing. So I appreciate that. Uh, at patreon.com, I will put a link below. I do, depending on your pledge level, I do 20 videos a month every weekday from my kitchen first thing in the morning. S uh, topics suggested by patrons. I do uh, several patron-only video live streams on Crowdcast, several patron-only video group sessions on Zoom, and uh, and that's that's what we do. I have actually capped the one-on-one -on -one sessions, so so those are not available anymore. I've gotten busy, so thank you very much. And with that, let me see. Um, Laura L'Oreal writes, did page for two years, now one meal a day carnivore to maintain 74 years old. You're never too old for this, okay? Wow, well, I was just had a patron only live um, video group session. And we were talking about how we've been told, some of us of a certain age, that when you things start to slow up, you don't feel as well. Well, you know, you're getting older. Or, you know, menopause, so you can give up on losing weight and feeling better. And it's all downhill from here. What a crock. So congratulations. Brianna Novak writes, healthy food and I don't have to obsess. Lost 130 pounds and holding steady or losing very slowly the last 15 pounds. No obsessing, no guilt, no counting, just eating good food, living my life. Fan. And that is victory right there. You've just defined a victory. And I believe Judy Tucker from Hopkinton, Iowa is here. By the way, Judy, I got the magazine. Thank you. Judy lost 130 pounds and she was written up in a magazine and she sent me a copy. Hey, Twyla. Jennifer Hackett, good morning. Jennifer from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, which I love saying. Arizona girl, I have no gallbladder, no thyroid. I've been doing keto for two years, four sizes down. I watch twin four-year-olds twice a week. I bike 10 miles five days a week, and I'm 74 years young. You tell me that this is a gimmick or a fad or dangerous or may. It's not. Not everyone needs to do it. Some people are very successful on Weight Watchers. Some people are very successful on going to the gym five days a week and eating low fat. I'm successful because I stopped thinking about food. Oh, and my t-shirt. I'm stronger than a cookie. Should be a link below to my teespring shop. All right, now it's called spring. Um, I, I don't worry that, that I'm powerless over food. I'm not powerless over food. I told myself I was powerless, weak, in front of pizza and tortilla chips that I could not resist them. Well, that was really ridiculous of me to say that to myself. Of course, I'm stronger than a cookie and a tortilla chip and pizza. I've been through some things in my life. We all have. And to say that a piece of food is stronger, mm -mm. We, have to, we have to stop saying that to ourselves. Um, Judy says, thanks to you and Dr. Westman. Oh, also, um, on my schedule, on my blog, the third Wednesday of every month, Amy Berger and I have Wednesday Wine Day. We have fun. You can also register for that, though. Shell F writes, Arizona girl, you go, girl. Hey, Linda Nelson. Amen. You're never too old. Never. Um, and Joanna Darnbo, Darnbro writes, what... Fabulous, encouraging posts. I've gotten to the age where I don't know whether to wear my glasses or not. I mean, sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. Um, Belinda O'Brien writes, love the snippets, keep me motivated, lost 59 pounds, still losing, no exercise, just had back surgery, very sedentary. You know the you know what we say around Go Keto with Casey? I don't exercise, I just dress like I do. You do not need to exercise to burn fat. As a matter of fact, it's it's exercise is an ineffective way to lose body fat. It's great for core strength and bone density and some, you know, it's just some mental happiness. 
but it's not effective for burning body fat. So you don't need to exercise. I have recently gotten, I've not been as diligent in the last three weeks as I had been uh, on the total gym because I, I want core strength. I want bone density. I want to be strong. But you don't need to be exercising to do this. <laughs> Nancy um, Fennell writes, my pantry is empty. Love this style of eating. So convenient. Our pantry, honestly, has more animal food in it than people food. Between the wild bird seed, the um, cat food, the dog biscuits, mostly the wild bird feed. Um, there's much more animal food. Although, you know, I don't really have, I've started feeding our cat, Luna, who is over 17 years old, and she's right there, you can't see her. I've started feeding her the food that I feed Jack, our dog. And the food I feed Jack, I make at home. And it is chicken, eggs, and golden flax meal. And that's it. So he doesn't even eat dog food, he eats people food. And I started giving it to Luna because she didn't seem like she was doing so well. And she actually seems to be doing better on it. And cats are obli obligate carnivores, at least cats in the wild are. Sherry Brink writes, I have a friend who, st I can't read this, who started this protocol with me on December 28th with a blood glucose level, oh my heavens, of 389. Now it's down in the 80s and 90s. Go Annie. Holy cow. Okay, if you are doing, if you are on medication for type 2 diabetes, you must do this. If you're going to cut your carbs out, do this under medical supervision because your blood sugar can drop too low. So thank you for that reminder, uh, Sherry. So you must do it too low. I mean, Dr. Westman in his clinic, he says, if you're taking insulin right now, let me know because I might need to cut it in half, like starting today. So, which is, tells you a lot. If you just cut out the carbs, your blood sugar drops. It seems like that would, that logically should have, that's been known. It's just easier to write a script. Um, Debbie, hey, Debbie, I only exercise to make myself feel good. Love getting outside and getting fresh air and sunshine. And um, Debbie, I, I, um, I understand you're on day six of a certain change you've made in your life. Karen Martinez writes, went from size 18 to size 10 since last June. I feel so good. Love keto. I love these stories. By the way, I started out in a 24W jeans from Costco. And big. Um, I bought jeans there as a little, as I started to lose weight. I would buy the next size down. And sometimes I'd buy two sizes down because I was losing steadily enough. I thought I'm going to have some aspiration ones. The last pair of jeans I bought at Costco were the smallest ones they had, um, size six in our store. And I have, been, but I actually, I've gotten into size four in some things. This shirt, by the way, is a, is a small. And I was wearing two X shirts. And if I was wearing a, like a shirt like this, I'd get them in the men's department and get like the two X's. Excuse me. And Twyla writes, looking forward to my daily walk with Monty. It's such a sunny day. Twyla has a little cute little dog named Monty. Just a totes adorbs. Nani B writes, so cold here. So while at the grocery this morning, I actually walked up and down all the aisles, not to shop, but to increase my steps. Good for you. Hey, Brenda writes, hello from Charlotte, North Carolina. Needed the pep talk. Had a lot of outside influences lately, and I let my good eating habits slide some. Thanks for reminding me that I am stronger than all food. You are welcome. And yeah, outside influences. Remember, no one gets to vote on what we eat. And if hunger is not the problem, food is not the answer. I don't get a vote on what anybody else eats. And frankly, I don't care. If you're happy eating keto ice cream and keto cookies and keto candy bars, have at it. It would not work for me. Not only for the higher carb content, but I don't want to eat fake versions of the food that got me fat in the first place. There's, it's just too slippery a slope. But good for you. 
Okay, Debbie writes, yep, six days of no alcohol. I don't even miss it. Um, <laughs> and she writes, I haven't had any pretzels either, LOL. Debbie's a patron. This is why I know the behind the scenes thing. <laughs> and Twyla writes, Debbie, you are stronger than pretzels. Um, and Debbie writes, Twyla, I've really been strict this time around. Slacked off some during the holidays. Didn't gain any more weight, but felt sluggish. See, this is the other thing. Even you know, the scale is not the, the last determinant of success. It's maybe number seven. It's certainly not the first. How we feel if we're coming off of medications, if our outlook is brighter, if we don't need an afternoon nap like we used to, if our acid reflux abates, if we can sleep at night. Um, th these are these are what matters. You know, the scale can be absolutely the same, but if you just don't feel as well, you don't feel as well. There's like this uncanny valley. You could be in ketosis and your weight stable, but you've increased, you've started eat, eating foods that don't serve you well and you don't feel as well. So go by how you feel and don't listen to what I eat. Don't let an app tell you what to eat. Listen to your body. Our bodies talk to us. And then when we don't listen for a while, they start yelling at us. <laughs> Laura asks, Casey, did you get past the 96.4 pounds? No, actually it's 97.4 pounds and no, I have not. I have been essentially weight stable for nearly four years. It doesn't matter. I'm 115 and a half pounds off of my heaviest weight that I know of. Um, Because, you know, for years I didn't weigh myself. Who's going to subject themselves to that? But no, I haven't. And that's okay. I would like to lose 2.6 more pounds so that I can say I've lost 100 pounds and started the ketogenic protocol. But if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I am, I, I am not going to arbitrarily not eat if I'm actually hungry just to lose 2.6 pounds. Um, okay, Joanna Darnbro writes, Judy, can we see your magazine article online here in the UK? And Judy has answered, I don't know. It's Woman's World, right, Judy? It's copy is right over there, but I was, has Dr. Westman on the cover. All righty. Um, Belinda O'Brien, 12 o'clock makes 24 hours of no eating and not hungry because keto helps me stay more satisfied not eating if I'm not hungry. That is the key. People think it's a gimmick. No. You naturally consume less food if you don't eat when you're not hungry, if you listen to your body, because you're more nourished, you're satiated, your body's not calling for more food because it's getting what it needs. So you eat less. It's not a trick. It's not a trick. Shell F writes, I'll look for the mag when I go out today, Judy. How exciting. Yes. And, um, and I'm really proud of my part in that and getting, getting her that. We were actually at a, uh, the, I think Judy wasn't at the Durham support group meeting online with Dr. Westman and he had sent out a question asking if anybody had lost 100 pounds following the protocol because a um, magazine editor or writer was had reached out to him to ask. And so and Judy happens to be a patron. And so she was there and I knew her story and all this. So cool. Um, oh, shameless commerce division really quick. As I say. You don't have to buy one thing to be 100% successful. I'm just trying to earn my keep around here. Face mask says there may be bacon in here. Go keto with Casey. Teespring shop. A spiral bound or perfect bound version of Go keto with Casey's 12 month record book, which is full of habit trackers and sayings and wit. And I've just put these on sale. My calendar, which are just about gone. 
You can get the spiral bound version of this at my blog. It will be more expensive and take longer to get to you. You can get this one at Amazon, Oop. at Amazon, and it'll get to you faster and it'll be less expensive because Amazon. Anyway, shameless commerce division. Just trying to earn my keep. Oh, wow. Who wrote about 10 meds? 10 meds? Okay, so there was, you know, people had their before and after photos and someone shared with me on, on, on I, I deleted the group, um, Keto After 40 with Casey Facebook group. It was just too much and people are crazy. But someone had done, you know, before and after photo. And this is one of my favorite ones. So there was, there was this hand, it was side by side, a hand with nine medications in it before, after, palm with half a pill. Just think about that. Think about the downstream effects of consuming all of those medications. Just think about it. Not to mention the expense. You know, people think, oh, my insurance covers it. Somebody's paying for it. And then you take a medication and Helena, who's not on here today, I don't think, but Helena, who's a nurse, she talked um, at, at, the, at the first Go Keto with Casey Roadshow in Greensboro. She got up and talked about how she had been on seven medications and she listed them off. The seventh one was to protect her stomach from the first six. And she came off of those medications in six months. Unbelievable. All right, I'm gonna sign off. Go to my blog to see the schedule for the Durham Support Group meeting, which is on Crowdcast, Wednesday Wine Day, which is on Crowdcast, and my, the rest of my schedule. I try to keep things posted and um, links to all, all the other stuff. Keep your carbs 20 grams or fewer a day. Total, not net. It's not on page four. I will put the link below. Don't eat it. Don't eat if you're not hungry and stop when you're satiated. Thank you to the patrons and y'all stay warm and safe. Bye.